there's something that really changes when you grow a beard and that is kissing and it can be a little bit of an embarrassing subject even to bring up with your partner or if you're uh, single and you're looking for love it can be a complete turn off or a complete turn on for someone if you've got a beard it does change kissing and I asked you on this channel whether or not kissing was better with or without a beard and 38% said it was worse 38% said there was no difference and 25% said it was better with a beard. Oh, you lucky sons of devils, you. So let's have a look at all of the different things that uh, need to come into play when you are kissing someone if you are growing out a beard or if you already have a beard. Now really it comes down to three things. The first one is the, the kissing style. The kissing style has absolutely changed since growing a beard. I have to focus on using my bottom lip a lot more because my top lip, even if I trim it back, it can very quickly become overrun with hair. Um, obviously cleanliness is a massive thing and asking about preferences and what sort of preferences or just paying attention to your partner's preferences in terms of the smell of your products or otherwise is also very important. Let's talk about all of the important things and, oh I've got something in my throat, the hacks. This video is based on an article on beardgrowingpro.com, so go check it out. I am on a mission to answer every beard question ever in the world, and I am over 210 articles at the moment, and I'm sure that it will be super valuable for you, so go check it out. Okay, here's my personal experience on what it's like kissing with a beard. The first biggest thing is obviously access to your lips. Now, I have varying lengths of mustaches, no, you know, depending on how I feel. Sometimes I go in there really hardcore with my trimmers and I cut it back to just above the top lip line and that gives me full access to my lips. Now I'm no Casanova but I do kiss my partner every single day and uh, it completely changes on whether or not I have recently trimmed or uh, I have allowed it to get a little bit long like it is at the moment. So there are a couple of little tricks. First of all if you want full access obviously trim completely above the lip line but also if you do want it a little bit longer making sure that it is completely even seems to be the number one thing that stops it from becoming super itchy because if all of the hairs are even it's more like um, a barrier rather than kind of something that's prickly and so what I do is I smile in the mirror and then I use the kind of contrast on my teeth to have a look to see if there are those tiny little hairs that are just poking out from the bulk so I get my comb or my brush I brush it down smile in the mirror and then look for the ones that just poke out and it's those little sort of hero hairs that are busting through the barrier that can make kissing really kind of just more prickly than it needs to be for you and your partner but obviously mainly your partner. So nice clean lines on the top lip making sure that you just push the outsides of the mustache a little bit further than usual and then your bottom lip is always kind of open and free. If you have got a fancy mustache waxing it out of the way is also a very easy thing um, but obviously wax can get a little bit uh, like tacky and sticky if it isn't if it's a high wax component and uh, only if you've only just recently put it on so access to the lips trimming up making sure the trim line is absolutely rock solid getting yourself a good pair of trimmers I've never been able to get a really good line with scissors so a good zero cut trimmer go check out the article um, and be a growing pro for my recommendations on those um, and yes that seems to be the number one thing that makes it pleasant or not pleasant. Cleanliness is a very important thing, but so is softening that hair. Now I live in Australia, so my beard can dry out very, very quickly in the summer months. So I am constantly hydrating it with beard butter, beard oil, beard balm, anything that I can get my hands on, I just slather in there. Now I do um, update my kind of, uh, my beard routine depending on how long my beard is, how dry it is, and I've got a couple of little things. If, if my beard's looking good and I just wanna touch it up a little bit, I go for beard oil. If it's looking like it's really scraggly and it's kind of really struggling, it's quite tough and coarse, especially around the mouth for kissing, then I use beard butter or beard balm, something that sits in the 
beard a little bit longer than, be than beard oil. And if it just looks absolutely terrible, I just need some help. I am a huge fan of uh, Blue Beard's Beard Saver. Now they haven't paid for this. It's something that I accidentally picked up in Austin, Texas. Actually, I was upsold uh, by a very nice barber because I had flaky hair and I was like, oh no, she said, try this. But I've actually now used it on my beard because I've grown a beard since then. And uh, it's just fantastic. I put it in there. It's a little bit kind of oily. It's slightly thicker. It's like a little bit of the, the mousse, but I've used up my entire tin. So Bluebeard, if you're listening, I'd love some more, uh, but I'll just go buy some if I don't hear from you. That's also absolutely fine. Um, but yes, I put some in. It's absolutely lovely. It's brilliant. It smells citrusy. It's really nice. So that beard saver just gives me like a deep hydration quickly and cleanliness and softness go hand in hand for making your beard more kissable. Um, and I often find I forget to put it properly in my mustache. I'm always doing this with my palms and getting it up underneath, but really using my fingertips and really getting it into the depths of the mustache. That's what's gonna make your beard more kissable. And I forget to do that a lot. So don't be like me, do what I say, not what I do. Now there's no doubt that my kissing style has absolutely changed. Now I'm not saying that I'm some sort of like amazing kisser, but I'm probably pretty good, I guess. Um, but the kissing style has changed. I have found that we don't sort of kiss passionately for as long or as often as we used to. You know, where you're just like all up in each other's business. None of that anymore. It's just, you know, much more focused on the bottom and a lot more pecking. But you know, I've been with my partner for a very long time for over, uh, oh God, uh, 12 or 15 years, something like that. Yes, I think that's right. So, you know, obviously we're out of the honeymoon period a while ago, but definitely I did notice that it does change your kissing style no matter what. I've asked her and she seems to think that it's, you know, it's fine, it's just different. And that's all it's all about. So you do have to kind of adapt. If you've got a shorter beard, your beard may be scratchier than you want it to be or your partner wants it to be, but it can result in beard burn and that can be really frustrating. But once it grows out a little bit, it's a bit softer, it can yield to the pressure of people putting their lips against yours and uh, it doesn't scratch as much. So if you have got a short to medium length beard and your partner is particularly um, sort of like complaining or, or asking you to trim it up, just try the other side for a little bit. Just push the length a little bit to see if it makes it better. I noticed a huge difference as did my partner and uh, yeah, asking them what they think and what their preferences are are very very important let's talk about that like everything in life communication goes a massively long way to making sure that kissing with a beard is pleasurable and enjoyable for everyone um, I think to just two people but if you're kissing more than that then good on you but uh, Asking what people's preference are or paying sort of notice to when they say, oh, I like the smell of that product or what's in your beard or, you know, what essential oils that's used and you can kind of like get an idea of what they like. Um, so definitely the smell is a huge thing. So make, making sure you understand their preference on smells, whether they like citrusy, if they like something more woodsy or smoky, um, because quite often the beard products are designed for men and preference in men smells, which is fine if you're kissing men, but often Often, um, they're not kind of transferable across to, uh, you know, the, the preferences of your partner. And so trialing different smells and asking your, your, your partner what they like is a fantastic way of making sure that they're not put off immediately as soon as they kind of come in for a kiss. Um, also asking them what their preference is in terms of, you know, try trimming up a little bit higher on your mustache. Try trimming um, the, the corners of your mustache just out a fraction more than they are at the moment. Ask if uh, it's too scratchy. Ask if there's anything that you can do to make kissing better. And communication and asking and uh, being receptive to feedback seems to be the one way to make sure that it is, is, is actually enjoyable for every single one involved. So there we have it. That is everything you need to know about kissing with a beard. It does change, but there are ways to make sure that the kissing experience is pleasurable for everyone. And, uh, you know, in my experience, it has changed the way me and my partner kiss and the frequency, but it's uh, different. It's not necessarily bad. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that list. And I shall see you in the next video.